they are involved in a project that we're, co that we're calling Bank 2030 of specifically answering the question of how do you, as a bank, accelerate the transition to uh, a low carbon, low carbon economy. And then there's the question of impact. So you need to decide internally within your strategy, what are your priorities, how are you gonna measure this? And again, there are, there are, port there are uh, methodologies to, to calculate this. We launched one last week for the investment, uh, investment sector, but there are many others com coming out, like the World Benchmarking Alliance, for example. The second skill, so we'll go faster now. I'm keeping good time. 25 past, I think, is that okay? Even sooner. Okay. Um, so the, sec the second, the second important, uh, important bit is to integrate that, cult uh, that strategy into, into your product, into your services, into your processes, very importantly, into your culture. We were having a discussion uh, d during the coffee break about how difficult it is to actually embed this into the culture because if it's not part of the culture, it just doesn't get done. It just becomes something that the, that the top signed up to and it actually doesn't uh, kind of flow into uh, people's daily jobs. So you need to integrate sustainability into client-facing conversations and transactions, equip the staff to invent, structure, and sell positive impact products and services. You need to think about how, how do you make sure that you're aware of the latest success stories in, in your in your sector, so you can um, so you can kind of learn by doing by uh, from what other other people are doing. You have to change staffs uh, your staff's mindset so that they see the connections with stakeholders and position impact based businesses as the mainstream for themselves. So it's not this just on the side of their desk. And you need to support them uh, support the uh, the development of their leadership skills so that they feel empowered to actually lead from from the coal face, right? The third bit is operational efficiency. So then the question, how do you actually make this work well? Because a lot of these things you will be, you will be, doing, uh, you will be doing business slightly differently. So different colleagues will need to be involved. You need to, products will require different client engagement approaches. Um, all of this needs to be designed, embedded, and made efficient. Right? And then reporting, reporting. Everybody loves, loves good reporting. Um, you need to report on this. Um, and there's lots of reporting mentioned in the, in the principles for responsible banking. Uh, and of course, then there's the assur insurance provider report that goes on top of that report. And I'm sure sooner or later, somebody uh, either in, in Cambridge University or, or, or UNEP will come up with an idea of writing a report about assurance providers' reports on the reports that the banks provide. And that will be a report to read. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be very, very exciting. Uh, lastly is collaborate. So you need to you need to know how to collaborate, who your who your stakeholders are, work with your peers, clients, governments, academia, NGOs, and it's actually very critical for banks to collaborate because, of all the finance players, the the, the big the big sections, you actually work with the clients. You generate most of the assets. Investors won't invest in green bonds unless a bank structures and underwrites them, right? Uh, so, so it's very critical that you look for these collaborations and you, and you work with those people on the ground, with government, with investors, and try to, try to create new solutions. So the last thing that I wanted to, to mention is that I've already mentioned kind of leadership that needs to be top down and, and bottom up and, and a set of skills that, that can, give you, can give you some sort of handle on how to manage these, implementing the, these changes. So these capabilities and leadership aspects together give give you if you notice and this is I think why a lot of people are, are uh, energized by this topic it gives you a sense of progression and achievement for the company it gives you it's very important for morale it's very important for staff retention and recruitment I wouldn't underestimate that because the finance sector and banks in particular haven't really been attracting the best and the brightest recently no offense um, but it, but it's 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 really there's a reputational uh, issue, right? There's 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 a license to operate issue, and if banks can can really show that they've seen themselves with a renewed sense of purpose, and that they see themselves as enablers and catalysts and change agents for for, for the better in society, that that can renew your your license to operate and your and your brand. And you know what? It might actually be fun. We have a lot of interesting challenges and questions to answer with this transition, like. What if, what if a future where, wh what does a future look like where there's enough for everybody? Can you run an economy based on plenty rather than scarcity? What if we manage to figure out a system where time poverty is something of the past? What if we can manage the end of work in our lifetimes, right? What if we manage to clean up the environment and the, tr uh, the energy and the transport system and we stabilize climate? 
and we have the potential to actually live forever as a species and eradicate poverty and, and bring our neighbors in from the cold. And what if giving, giving full equality in earnings and power to women reduces the need for such high military spend around the world and we can build you know, more universities with that money? Yeah. There are many futures that I can envisage. Some, are, some of them are bright and some of them are quite bleak. Um, and it's initiatives like the, the principles for responsible banking that make me think that, you know what, maybe focusing on the bright ones isn't such a silly idea. Happy to take questions, if there are any. Thank you very much, Kayatan. Um, by the way, I hope I had um, pronounced your name correctly and given the correct name to our attendees. It's, it's been called many times. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what you said was actually very interesting, and I think uh, especially the questions that you ended on, uh, we will hopefully be discussing it in the course of the workshop. And you're sitting on to the drinks as well, I hope. I will, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so we'll maybe take questions then. Th uh, thank you very much. Uh, and with that, uh, I would now like to ask the panelists of the, of the second panel of the day uh, to come to the podium, as well as my colleague uh, Raymond. Uh, Raymond Franken is the head of communications uh, within the European Banking Federation, and he's also the head of CFR. Uh, and among others, uh, he also has a responsibility for financial education, which also has to do with this topic. Uh, and uh, he is uh, going to moderate this panel. Thank you very much, Burshak. And thank you also, Kaitan, some, uh, some really good pointers for the discussion that's coming ahead. I made some notes and we're going to have uh, some questions. On stage, we'll now have uh, Ter Bengtsson from Nordea, Tony Balabriga from BBVA, Elsa Palanza from Barclays, Cecile Rechatin from Société Générale, and Dimitrios Dinoupoulos from the Reyes Bank. And this is supposed to be my microphone, and it works. Yes, very good. So we have a number of handheld microphones. And maybe Dimitrios, yes, we don't need a red chair, yes. Well, this morning we very much talked about the concept of the principles, the principles for responsible banking. Uh, this session looks to go beyond the concept, but goes to establish what needs to be done inside a banking organization, more from an operational point of view. And wi with that, uh, I think, Tony, I, I want to start with you, BBVA. Uh, can you give us very briefly an overview of how you are embracing the, uh, the principles inside your organization? Well, thank you, Raymond. Um, great to be here, Jean, uh, with my colleagues. Um, yes, I, as I as I comment uh, this morning, uh, we we started the journey to define a clear strategy on long-term targets just two years ago, and and we announced our, our strategy on on climate change and sustainable development in February last year, so one year ago. And um, well, we think that the principles will uh, will require to update and uh, probably to refine some targets and to be more explicitly uh, concrete in certain targets also. But in general, we, we, we thought that uh, we anticipate what the principles uh, are requiring now. No? So <coughs> in our case, uh, we, as, as, as I said, <coughs> we have defined a strategy with a specific uh, uh, long-term targets at 2025. And we have three pillars. The first one is to, to finance, the second one is to manage, and the third one is to engage. So, and I think the three pillars covered in a certain way the, the, what is being required mainly by the principles. Um, so on the first one, the finance, uh, our target is to, to mobilize 100 billion euros on sustainable finance, not only in green, but also in sustainable infrastructure, microfinance, financial inclusion, different areas that we think that are, are, are relevant. Um, on the second uh, pillar, we, we have also clear targets in terms of renewable energy. We have uh, set the target of 70% of renewable energy in 2025 and 100% on, on 2030. But also we have a more qualitative target, which is uh, this idea of the to progressively align our lending portfolios in the most sensitive sectors to the Paris Agreement. And using, in this case, the methodology that uh, we are piloting with the 2D investment initiative, investing initiative. And then also we have the third pillar, which is engagement. Engagement with, uh, with all our key stakeholders, but mainly, obviously, with our clients. See how we can help them also to make this transition. So now, after one year time, we, we, we are quite happy uh, in terms of uh, what uh, we are uh, implementing. 
so again, we need to have facts and outcomes. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, capital mobilization, we are on track uh, to mobilize those 100 billion. Uh, we are very active on, on lending, promoting new development, new solutions for on lending, uh, which are quite innovative, and also on green bonds as well. On the and also on the management on the on the risk uh, on the second pillar, we we are piloting this this exercise with KDII. So this is where we are now. So I I think that well later we come to the tips and and what what we thought that we were the, the, the key success factors to have this in place and which are the difficulties. Uh, so the how we have arrived to this, I think will be more powerful and more useful for everyone. So Cecile, Societe Generale, may I jump to you? Your organization, just like all the others here on stage, has been quite active in the space of sustainable finance for some time. What's new with the principles? Is this another uh, block that you need to fill in or does it have a different function? Um, my, my answer would, will be quite similar to what Tony has just said, actually, because uh, we, w when we heard about the, the banking principles, we thought that it was really consistent what we've, we've been doing so far. But it was kind of um, overarching structure, and, and everything that we were doing was fitting well within this stru structure. But it, it, it helped give this consistency and also... Um, sometimes internally, it, it can be useful to, to, to have the people make sure that what we are doing is also what the other banks are doing. And, and I think that this, this convincing of the, um, the, the client uh, relationship managers, of the front officers sometimes, well, they think, well, do we really need to do this? When you are able to show them that yes, because the other banks, the leaders in sustainability are doing this, it helps and it helps accelerate, it helps um, going quicker to, to, to this um, objective. Do you have to make it clear to those people at the front desk interacting with clients that this is much more than marketing? Yes, yes, clearly. <laughs> I think we need to be honest about this. Culture is key. Um, it's something that we've been working on for, for many years. We see something changing lately because I think uh, it's been said before that the uh, new generation finding um, sense in what they are doing and their day-to-day -day business is, uh, job is very important to them. And, and even for older generations, I think that everybody thinks that there's something happening around climate, biodiversity. We hear a lot of it at the television. And, and then people realize that what they do in the bank, whatever their job is, is really meaningful and important and can make the difference. So that's, that's this that we want to see in the, um, in the banking principles also. Pere at Nordea, you, you, we, t we talked the last week and you, you explained to me that you need internal selling of, of this idea of this whole concept. One of your colleagues travels around the world and he makes uh, videos, uh, Sasha Beslik, and he stands actually on the, uh, the Greenland uh, ice shelves and, uh, and explains why this is important that from a bank perspective this is addressed. Is, is that also part of the internal campaign that you have in Nordea to make sure that you embed sustainable finance into your culture? Uh, well, he's a salesman traveling the world and I sit in the office and work on these issues. Uh, <laughs> uh, just to add uh, maybe a little uh, texture to what you were saying uh, about setting targets and, and about discussing with the front office uh, we also have a substantial amount of work to do uh, with the mid office uh, and the back office. Uh, we have uh, started uh, several working groups or work streams within the bank to start implementing these uh, uh, principles in, in various, uh, various ways. Uh, we have uh, the risk department uh, to integrate ESG risk in our risk framework. Uh, it's something uh, that we're working with and I just found uh, on our board level, we have 17 different uh, risk documents. Uh, I think there are some thousand pages together that all identify the traditional uh, financial, operational, uh, reputational risks, etc. And now we're trying to integrate the ESG risk as well. Uh, so that's a massive uh, work, and that's also uh, a work that involves the uh, supervisors because uh, they have to approve all our processes, etc. We need to involve the IT department because uh, we started to try to tag our green loans and try the exposure to, to 
various sector, be it uh, carbon intensity or et cetera, et cetera. And you run into issues about uh, IT budgets and mundane things like that. But there are a lot of, lot of uh, practical things. You involve the legal department. Uh, what can we report on? The negative impact? Is that something? How do you how do you put that to the market with our you know with our agreements with the stock exchange etc. That type of reporting. Uh, what do you do with your loan agreements? Do you incorporate the principles? Should they be representations and warranties? Should it be event of default? Uh, you you have a uh, quite a bit of, of that type of uh, not so flashy sort of marketing sales uh, work as well to do. So, so very much a journey for the entire organization from, from top to the very bottom and not just for a CSR or a sustainability department. Uh, yeah. Elsa, is that the case also at, uh, at, at Barclays? Absolutely. I would agree wholeheartedly. I think um, – so I, I'm quite new to Barclays actually and, and I would say that coming in anew, it's been a really interesting process to sort of scour the bank and find these pockets of activity that are all quite exciting, honestly. There's a lot of good work being done. But I'd say that actually one of the great benefits of the principles – um, is providing a cohesive uh, umbrella or cohesive strategy for us to all align ourselves with to bring these disparate pieces together um, and begin to, to build that. I think there's no doubt that this has to be attacked from multiple different places. We've found our risk team similarly to be a great place to start, um, most notably because certainly in the UK we find that the regulators are – um, suddenly providing some amazing wind at our backs in terms of, of starting to ask really probing questions about what we're doing, uh, investigating our own exposure to climate-related risk. And so that's a huge opportunity for us to build upon in terms of then advancing some of our other sustainability agenda. So I would agree. I'm really proud here on stage to have a, a, an accurate reflection of uh, north and south and east and west of, uh, of Europe. Dimitrios, Piraeus Bank, the biggest bank in, uh, in, in Greece, how have you embedded sustainability into your organization? <coughs> well, um, thank you. Thank you for the question and thank you for inviting us. Um, well, the principles come at a very interesting moment in Greece. We're trying to struggle to come out of a 10-year economic crisis. The banks have been basically restructured in many ways. They have new boards of directors and new CEOs and all the rest. So it is a very interesting and a very exciting moment. So what, what, what are we doing now? What are we t how are we trying to incorporate the principles internally? Because that's where we put a lot of emphasis now. now and one of the first things that we do, well, first of all, our CEO was uh, in Paris and, you know, like he presented the, uh, the, uh, the principles at the launch of the uh, event in, in Paris. And, and secondly, one of the, se the next thing we did is to establish a committee. Uh, well, we had one, but we reestablished it on corporate responsibility with the main mandate to coordinate within the whole of the bank and the whole of the group, Pirelles Bank Group, what we are doing to implement the principles. Now, this uh, committee is chaired by the CEO himself. We are the first meeting will be held in a couple of weeks, that's in February, and one of the first things we want to do is to approve an action plan. We have a, a draft action plan of exactly what we'll be doing on three levels, internally, nationally, and internationally. And one of the internal uh, uh, issues that we uh, will we'll address is to set up, set up a steering committee to bring together those silos in the bank. You know, all those different departments that don't talk to each other, don't even know each other, but they're all doing bits and pieces uh, that contribute to, to sustainability. So we're going to bring that together. That is very, very important because we want to make sure that the, these principles is not just an issue of the sustainability unit, it's an issue of the whole of the bank. So these are the, the first steps that we were trying to do internally. Um, of course, we want to get the board of directors on, on, on board, and this is very, very important. So we, we arranged a meeting. Now I, I sort of go into the, what we do nationally. This was a press conference, a very big event in Athens, where we had the chairman of the board, we had the CEO, and we also had the governor of the, Gre of, of the Bank of Greece. And we presented the principles to other banks and to other stakeholders, because we realized that if we're going to go ahead, at least in Greece and in the rest of the world, I understand, we need to work together. We need to bring the various stakeholders together. So that was very, very important. We're trying to bring, we're working very closely with the Hellenic uh, Bank Association, 
because we're trying to get all the other banks, there's not that many, Greece is about four or five basically, to get them on board. And we also, at an international level, we try to work closer with Unipify to spread, you know, like the message as, as much as we can, hence our presence here today. So it's great to see everybody's working on, uh, on step one, embedding it into your culture, embedding sustainable finance into your culture, embedding these responsible banking principles. Uh, the principles are going to evolve a little bit before they are finalized in, in September and signed in New York at the United Nations. But then from there onwards, uh, let's talk about the next steps. Uh, how do you operationalize that and how do you actually uh, ensure that that operation is efficient and effective? Elsa. I have the mic in my hand, so I have to go first. <laughs> well, I think, uh, so I'd say first and foremost, it is really important. It was very helpful for, for us. I'll be quite candid. I think just to have our CEO be the one to sign his name up to the principles is, is actually in and of itself critical for us to ensure that as many have talked about already today, that there is leadership from the very top. And, and there are some exciting developments internally. Unfortunately, our ESG report comes out at the same time as our financial reporting in just a couple of weeks' time. So there's some things that I desperately wish I could share with you right now that unfortunately we'll have to just wait, and I well, we encourage all of you to take a look a at bit. it later. Just one thing. <laughs> I can't give you the inside scoop. Um, but I will say that I think um, certainly we're changing some of our governance structures uh, to think about ensuring that it is both true internally and also visible and obvious to those externally that both our board and our executive leadership are deeply invested in this. In terms of next steps, it gets down in, into the nitty gritty of how we start um, applying these principles across the every operation within the bank. Um, you know, we've certainly taken a keen look at our lending practice first and foremost because it's a huge portfolio and it's, it's sort of a, a first go, but there's a lot more exposure to take on um, and we're not shying away from that. It's just a matter of phasing it out in a way that is, is doable, quite frankly, and it's going to take some time. And that's where I think, again, there's such a benefit to being part You're of the You're talking coalition. about exposure to coal. Not just coal, not just coal. I mean, certainly en sensitive energy sectors, absolutely. But then we start pulling back the layers and we think, what do we do about our agriculture um, activities? There's such opportunity there or transportation or what, ha you know, the, I think everyone in this room can think about it, 50 different sectors where we could start applying um, both for climate purposes and also for social ones. This has been brought up already today too, but there's no doubt those issues are completely intrinsically linked and, and you don't can't, think about one without thinking about the other. So um, it's it's a matter of sort of taking off bite-sized pieces, but to the extent that we are a coalition of banks and can share where things are working in one area and where they might not be in another, then we can learn from one another. And that's one of the best parts about this. Cecile, Societe Generale, is that a similar approach that you have at the, the, the Marclays, or is it different? Um, <coughs> yeah, well, I think it's it's similar on, on many axes, but we, we will also make um, a strong um, push in, in integration in the coming months because that's, that's really where we want to see a difference in making sure that all the departments of, of the bank are really involved in this, not only on the capacity to, to perform the uh, environmental and social or ESG checks that needs to be done, but also controlling them for the, the risk department or a compliance department, and even for the audit departments, making sure that they have this in mind when they are conducting audits and that every everybody knows that what they have to do and, and all the lines of defense, the lines of control are, are there to be done. The, a great benefit we see also in the, in the principles is that as they can be adapted to the different institutions, different levels, and that they they, they are true for, uh, for the group, but also for the subsidiaries. And it's a great way to empower the subsidiaries. Sometimes they feel that the, um, the objectives we have at group level are not really relevant for them. There we, we give them a way to say, well, what's, what's your objective? It needs to be consistent with the group, but at the same time, it makes it easier for them to see where they, they, they want depending on the, uh, the business environment, the type of products that they um, deliver and so on. When you look in the future on the implementation, we see a, a huge need for proper data collection to be transparent about that. The, the, the methods need to be decided, methodology needs to be addressed. Uh, but Per at, at Nordea, when it comes to data collection, and, and not necessarily at your bank, but in, but in general, 
do we have the, the, the systems in place to collect the data that we need to accurately measure the impact of what we do? Or do, do we just need to adjust and fine tune the systems that we have to, to get those accurate reporting? Or do we need something completely new? I can say no for the first part of the question. We don't have, <laughs> we don't, I don't think uh, we have the systems in, in uh, I mean, certainly we, we don't have the, the system. I, I think that's uh, um, maybe one of the biggest uh, challenges uh, with the principles that measuring impact uh, and uh, how we do that. And I think it's very important that we will develop an industry standard so we do it in the same way because we, share some of the clients, uh, we are active in the same industries, many of us, and uh, if we have one completely different view of one industry and another bank has a, other, you know, a 180 degree view of that industry or that client, uh, that's not gonna going to work and, and maybe this will uh, also uh, become clearer. Uh, we'll, we heard the EBA uh, today are, are having a, a, a mandate now to uh, investigate these things, a green supporting factor, brown penalizing factor, maybe uh, so, uh, that will, if, if they come to a conclusion that probably will in for European banks, then be the defining uh, method. Uh, but uh, I think many are, are kind of struggling in this space, but it's, it's uh, moving ahead. But I think it's important that we um, somewhere down the line use the same methodology. We have an advanced discussion in Brussels at uh, the, the Sustainable Finance Action Plan, uh, also on taxonomy, an important factor of that. Tony, do, do you think that that is a prelude of to, to what's to come, or, ca or can that European um, taxonomy be applied on a global scale as well, maybe? Well, you never know, but uh, the, the, the work that's being done is, is impressive. Uh, obviously, it will take some time. In June, it seems to be we have the first first, uh, first package of the, of the taxonomy, focus on green activities, so that's great. Mm, no, I, I want to come back also to the point that, per, uh, and, the, and the point you, you said about the data, no? The, the data and the, and the challenge, that means that uh, to set long-term targets with no data. No? That's uh, my colleague from Federico say, well, this is a, this is the challenge, no? And, um, and, uh, and well, the, the experience that we have is that um, we have to make some assumptions. Uh, we, don't, we don't want to have the, the, perfect, uh, the perfect story to tell, but at least the big picture there, no? I try to find a first minimum viable product, and then after iteration and iteration, after one year you will have more granular information and you will improve what you have. No? And that was the challenge when we said, well, we want to mobilize, I don't know how many billions. Well, we start to measure a little bit, but what we consider green and not sustainable. So, oh, there is no taxonomy. So where, where do we start? So, well, we try to say, well, there is some standards, the green bond standards, social bond standards. Well, maybe we are going to to get the right picture 98% or 95%, not 100%, but that it was quite reasonable to do that. Could, no? could this be a, a risk factor for the ultimate success of the principles? Pardon? Could this be a risk for the principles and the, the ultimate implementation? What do you mean? To me, the, the, the absence of a proper taxonomy. Ah, yeah, well, I, I think the taxonomy will be there and the banks, uh, European banks that are already promoting sustainable finance, we are going to use the uh, taxonomy to to show better our our commitment on, 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 on green finance and sustainable finance in general. I think it's a good initiative on the EBF to, to develop a certain kind of guidelines to, to, to have a common language among different banks to see how we can apply the taxonomy defined by activities 